Hi, thank you for coming and talk with us about you and your career and what you've been doing. Would you start by saying who you are and where you're from? Uh, my name is Dale Brethauer. I'm from Arizona. I live just outside Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. Great. Where, um, what was your first exposure to HPT and when was it? My first exposure, I don't really know because I started working in the field long before there was anything called HPT. Uh, so that uh, it was called performance analysis, behavior analysis, uh, education, <laughs> training, uh, programmed instructions called by many, many names when I first started. And that was in the late 50s, early 60s. Well, thinking back on that, what was some of your biggest influences for, um, for this field, for what you do? Uh, the, the biggest one of all has to be uh, the person who sponsored my first professional paper at a conference. Uh, that was B.F. Skinner. When I was, uh, I was still a graduate student at, at Harvard, where I earned my master's degree. I didn't earn my PhD there, I earned my PhD from Michigan. Uh, but of the, the people there, Another person who was a great teacher uh, was a man, a man named Dick Hernstein, who uh, annoyed many people by writing a book with Charles Murray about intelligence later on. But uh, he was an absolutely great teacher because he always presented, when he presented experimental research, he said, here's how the experiment unfolds from the eye of the subject. And he would tell you exactly how the experiment, and then he would stop and say, how do you suppose it came out? And then you could talk about that. But by the time you finished that, you really understood uh, that experiment inside out. Great teacher. Very good. In 30 seconds or less or abouts, could you give us your elevator speech on HPT or on what you do? On what I do. Uh, what I do is uh, help people learn, and mostly what they want to learn is how to perform better, how to do something better, how to make a contribution in life, uh, how to do the job they're in, how to do the next job they're going to be in, how to get along with that obnoxious colleague that they have, whatever it is that they want to learn. And in the process of helping them learn whatever they want to learn, uh, I will also weave in basic principles of human performance technology so that if I'm successful, they will be satisfied that I've helped them with what they want to learn and they will be a more independent learner so that they can go ahead and learn them on their own and maybe help other people learn to do similar things. Now that's more than 30 seconds, but I'm sorry, it's the way it goes. But th that's great, and thank you for that. With what you're currently doing now, what are you learning about for your, uh, in your current role or what you're doing in, in retirement? And okay, uh, that's, a, that's an excellent question because I retired about 10 years ago, and when I retired, uh, I started reading things that I'd never read before. And I read a book that Gary Rumler wrote me that was written by a man named Thomas Sowell. And Thomas Sowell is an extraordinary economist. So I started reading uh, economics and I found out it wasn't about money, it was about allocation of resources to get results. And that was something, oh, I should have known more about this because I would have understood more about how good executives think about the world if I had known these things. So I became a, a soul fan and I've been uh, learning a lot about economics and how to connect economics to whatever it is that, that I'm trying to do. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Could you give us an HP term, HPT term that you would like to define for us? Let me try the word improvement. Okay. Uh, uh, improvement 
has to connect to whoever's performance you're talking about. How is that performance going to improve? How is it going to change? And how is that performance going to add more value? To whom? Where? How? What's it going to cost other people? Is it going to harm other people? What are the unintended consequences of that? And that whole bag of things is what performance is. What part of the organization does it contribute to? What part of the organization does it detract from? All of that is in that word improvement. So for what are we, changing, changing performance is easy. I can shoot you. It's, it's done. I can uh, offer you a, a good meal. Changes your performance. It's, that is so easy. I can say run faster. That changes your performance. Improving your performance is the big deal. And that's one reason that I come back um, for the last 40 years or so uh, to ISBI because there are a lot of people around who are actively engaged in improving performance and helping others know how to do that. Well, improving is a great segue for this next question. Can you share us a story either with NISPI or ISPI or a project you've done where that you were involved in improving? Uh, I, yesterday I gave a presentation in which I talked a little bit about an organization called Ronigan Research and Development. One of the owners of that company uh, was one of my doctoral students who had done her uh, dissertation on uh, connecting performance technology and strategy implementations and work that out in that company. So the, the, the fun aspect of that company was that they had to do everything better, faster, and cheaper than their, than their customers could. Now their customers were people like IBM, Compaq, major companies, and they had to be able to produce uh, plastic boxes for computers and things like that. And every one of their clients had a whole department, a whole division to do that. And, but the problem was that they were all big organizations and they couldn't do things really fast. And once you announce a program, you've got to deliver on time or you get in lots of trouble in the marketplace and with the regulators and all that sort of stuff. So they were kind of a time machine where they had to do things really, 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 really fast. And my students worked in that organization and if you could go up to anybody in the organization and say, hey, what's your job? And they would say, I am a customer service agent. And you'd say, how does what you do contribute to customer satisfaction? And they would say, well, I'm cleaning this aisle right now, and the, the pallets from the production machines roll down this aisle. And if they can't roll down this aisle and get on the trucks in time, the customers are very unhappy. Or they might say, uh, I am designing this new product, and if I can't get the design right so that we can produce it well, then the customer is going to be unhappy. Or they might say, uh, what I do is, is price our pro projects. So when we take on a project from a major company, I'm the one that puts the price on that. Mm -hmm. And if I put the price too high, we don't get the bid. And if I put it too low, we don't make the money. Uh, so I have to price right. So that's how I contribute. So everybody in the company uh, could tell you how they contribute. Mm -hmm. And then you could ask them another question, how do you tell how well you're doing? And they would say, oh, I have right here my biggie graph. And it is a graph of my performance that shows how, whether I'm doing my job. Because if I don't do my job, somebody else can't do their job, and so on. So everybody knew what their job was and how to measure it. What happens if you don't do your job? <laughs> well, then we've got problems. We can't deliver to the customer. So it was, it, uh, my student had created that kind of atmosphere and also the metrics to back it up. And that I found very, very exciting. Well, Dale, thank you very much for your time and really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>